What's eggshell? Is elephant breath beige? It's actually, I think it's a grey. Oh, thinking of um, overtly olive. Elephant's breath and overtly olive are really good examples of warm colours. Oh. Yeah, they've got those warm undertones. The crimson pimpernel, Minnie's meadow, cradle of the sea. <laughs> Have you done any decorating projects yet? I've done most of the decorating, actually. And how does that go? I've had positive feedback from my nine-year-old. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, well. I'm Ruth, I'm a painter decorator. Hi. You are watching Things People Do with me, Jamala, on YouTube. Click like or subscribe. Only click like if you like it. In fact, no, click like if you don't like it. Because we all lie sometimes. Click subscribe if you want to be subscribed. <sighs> I'm out of breath. Enjoy. Hello, Ruth. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. Very nice to see you, Ruth. Thanks. I did expect you, probably foolishly, to come in overalls. My friends did suggest that I come in overalls. Because um, I own a, a bright pink pair. Mm. Um, and with the Barbie film, I've been rocking them recently. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I do get some funny looks when I go to the supermarket after work. in just bright <laughs> pink overalls. But, uh, so that's not just a stereotype. You do actually wear overalls. Not well, for fashion, but for work purposes. Yes, I don't wear them all the time. Oh, um, most of the time I turn up in scruffy leggings, but I do own pink overalls and also a nice bottle green pair as well. Mm. I do like to stand out as if I don't enough doing this job. I'm gonna yeah, I'm I'm gonna touch on that because mm. I'm gonna say you're under thirty. You look like you're under thirty. Yes, I turned thirty in April, and oh. not not what I was expecting. No, when Ryan said we've booked Ruth, the painter and decorator, I went right few things to unpick here female to begin with mm -hmm. stereotype mm -hmm. definitely banishing that one <laughs> haven't you and you're under 50 yeah yeah wow yeah thanks for noticing Please. female <laughs> and under 50 means a lot. I'm what enjoy, assessment i'm gonna enjoy having Ruth i'm gonna take pause. that as a compliment <laughs> oh, oh, okay um why? why why did you become a painter and decorator i, I ask myself that question quite a lot no um I decorated from a young age, weirdly enough. My mum was... Legally? A, no, <laughs> like child labour. <laughs> <laughs> My mum uh, is a big fan of decorating, so I've got memories as young as 10. We just do it at the weekend, just make over the, a bedroom or a bathroom yeah. or whatever, yeah. How many, and we, did, you, did you live in a castle? I don't know. <laughs> so you make it well, over my mum's got this really annoying habit and now she's passed it on to me that she decorates a room every two, three months. She's, really? She's, Every two or three months? Yeah. She sees a colour she likes in a magazine and she's like, right, I'm doing the kitchen in that tomorrow. I'm going to go buy the paint. And now I do it. So. <laughs> I like that attitude because I'm someone who would like to do more painting and decorating. I'm stopped by two things, Ruth. One, I don't know how to do it. Mm. And two, it just seems like a massive ball lake. What, Tom, why don't you know how to decorate? You buy a tub of paint, you get a brush and you slap it on the wall. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> come on, Ruth. <laughs> Don't hold back here, please. <laughs> have you done any decorating projects yet? Uh, <laughs> I have. I do most of the decorating, actually. And how does that go? Uh, <laughs> I've had positive feedback from my nine-year-old. Oh, great. Seven year old. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> fuck, it's hard, isn't mm. it? It is hard. I do enjoy it. Mm. It's very therapeutic. Have you actually done any painting, Tom? <laughs> I used to help my dad when he was doing it, mm. but not like as what, I think that would mainly involve writing messages under the paint. Yeah, or like, wallpaper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then looking forward at the age of eight to someone discovering that in what felt like the distant future. Yeah, that you'd written your name under the wallpaper. I've discovered messages from the sixties under wallpaper. Have you? Yeah, oh. and like height charts. You know, when you mark the top of kids yes. when they grow. Yeah, really cool. You're That's telling really cool. me as an adult, you've never done any decorating. So the house we moved into a house that had just been decorated. And that was fine. <laughs> we didn't do like, oh, this will do. That was fine. <laughs> that was it. Leave it as it is. Yeah. A bonkers. <laughs> that is bonkers. My mum will faint when she hears that. <laughs> I, I, I do love a bit of decorating. I love mm. it. it. Once you get into it, usually yeah. if your headspace is good and yeah. usually the kids are out and I can just crack on with it, move yeah. all the furniture, get it all set up, mm -hmm. get the lino what is it dust sheets dust sheets yes all, the, all that out get all the gear and then i can crack on and yeah. i can lose myself in it yeah music on yeah, yeah. i love it mm -hmm. but um but then after i've done like half a room 
<laughs> you lose interest. I'm like, fucking hell, I've got to cut in and do all this shit. And I'm like, yeah. But it's hard work. How do you, you must be really passionate about it to... Yeah, I think um, the satisfaction of seeing a room that really needs a bit of love on a Monday morning and then by the Friday evening I'm leaving and it looks ten times better. See, I it's... always think that with a painted decorator, Ruth, because so this film studio is where we record the podcast. Mm -hmm. In the studios downstairs where they literally are filming big stuff, they're always painting them, Joe, aren't they? They're uh, painting backdrops. Yeah. And there's something about the smell of fresh paint, Ruth, that is the smell of optimism uh, and fresh yeah, stars. Yeah, see, I can't smell it anymore. <gasps> I've gone nose blind to paint. Nose blind? Yeah, because people say to me all, all the time, doesn't it smell amazing? Fresh paint smells lovely in here. And I'm like, can't smell it. It's just, Whoa. yeah. Which is quite worrying, I think. I've been around too much paint. I a little sniff of your pen there, Joe, aren't you? It just reminded me that I should get my favourite smelling pen out of my pencil case. Can I have a blast? Because it... <laughs> That's quite intense. Have a go on that, Ruth. Even with his nose blindness. It was... Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're all gonna have a, your nose blindness. We're all going to have a headache in a minute. It's a fresh one. It'll go on the way past. Shall we try to see it sniffing your pens? <laughs> I've just pictured us taking the podcast to a new level where we just <laughs> get random people on and all do drugs together and see how the episode unfolds. <laughs> right. But I know what you mean, Tom. The smell of fresh paint not only gives me a little bit of a high and often a headache mm. if you don't have enough um, ventilation ventilation in the room. Mm -hmm. But it does have that smell of optimism, a bit like freshly cut grass. Mm. You're like, oh, this is going to look nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Still a little bit high. <laughs> oh, God. So what other, jo what, what other jobs do you do in terms of, is it just painting? It's not just slapping paint on the wall as you... Kindly, I knew that's that's going to keep coming back to haunt me, isn't it? Right, as okay, it should. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, good. Actually, the slapping paint on the wall is probably the easiest bit. So once you get round to that, once I, as a professional, get round to that bit, that's the quickest and easiest part. What's your technique for that then? Um, well, for actually getting the paint on the wall. Well, yeah. Surely we can break it down into painting techniques. Do you use brushes? Do you use? Do we rollers? need to give Ruth a scenario here? So Ruth, you've described that lovely feeling of transforming a house. Mm -hmm. Let's say you've walked into a shithole. Mm -hmm. I've walked into many. Okay, so <laughs> Joe, let's 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 model some rooms for Ruth. I'm going to give you Ruth um, <clears throat> almost doomsday. It's a room with wood chip wallpaper that's been up for ages. That's scenario one, Joe. What else are we walking into in this house? My two boys' bedroom, who's got holes in all of the fucking walls from where they've just been lobbing shit at it. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's paint. There's crayon markers all everywhere crayon. all over the walls mm. there's sticker residue you know what i mean like there's gunky all, yeah, yeah gunky shit like that and then there's all these stuck stars oh you know, the glow in the dark yes. stars oh, I love where those. i've put the rather than doing it like with a bit of blue tack i've done it with the harder stick on <laughs> stickers okay and then it peels the plaster and shit off if you try and take it off so mm -hmm. they've been on there for about eight years now okay we just sort of paint over them <laughs> um <laughs> That's their shithole of what their room looks like at the minute. What about, <coughs> we, should we give her a third? Let's start you off with those, Ruth, okay. and then we can go deeper into our shithole house. Okay, <laughs> sounds delightful. Yeah. Uh, Woodchip wallpaper, is that coming off the uh, wall? Is it? Yeah, yeah, we're going to get rid of it. Get, you get you rid can of choose it. how we're going to, but we're going to modernise this house. You want nice smooth walls? I think so, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Texture? I want to be able to touch them. If, uh, if for any reason we're doing something with our hands up against the wall <laughs> and we want it to be like yoga... Um, uh, Wall-based yoga. <laughs> I, I want the wall soft. Yeah, Please. soft. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the wood chip can come off, but it's a question of what's underneath. Um, so wood chip mainly is put up to hide imperfections in walls. Right. So, or I have stripped it from a house that was just put up as sort of a fashion statement. It was bizarre. The walls underneath were perfectly fine. They just ch they just liked the look of it. What is, what is wood chip? Wood, it's it's wallpaper with literal chips of wood in it, so it's textured, and then people paint over it. But it's very thick, so any cracks or dents in the plaster, it'll just cover it all up. For some reason, I thought you just meant, you know, the wood chips you get at, like, playgrounds and parks. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was stuck in the wall. Oh. It's like that on a smaller scale, really. Like, why have you done that to your house? <laughs> Sorry, now I know what you mean with the bobbles. And yes, shit. Okay, yeah, fine. yeah, it's very, very 70s and 80s. Reference in a pulp song. Is it? With wood chip on the wall. Da, 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 da. Oh, wait, it's a young carry on. Both 20 oh, years younger. Don't worry about it. How'd you get it off? The steamer. Steamer. 
Um, oh, yeah. But if it's a really, <laughs> very satisfying. Yeah. But if it's a really old house, the steamer can damage the plaster underneath. Oh, and that's nice. the last thing you want because then that just comes off with the paper. So what you can do is just soak it in water and then just scrape, scrape, scrape. And it can take you, take you a week to do one room just to get the paper off. <sighs> Now, yeah. hang on. Does it take you a week? It does. Or do you just say it's going to take a week because <laughs> that bumps up the fucking job by four days? To to get it all off, if it's on the ceiling as well, which it sometimes is, um, and then underneath you've got all the wallpaper paste residue that you need to clean off the wall. If you're just going to paint these walls, it needs they need to be clean. They can't have any paste left on. So it needs a proper clean. Job. And then a sand and then fill in any holes. So it's not just a case of grabbing the end of the paper and... Are you laughing because I said fill holes? <laughs> he is very, yeah, it's exa- you've spotted exactly what has just happened. <laughs> as innocent a phrase as fill holes. And it's a big part of my job filling holes. <laughs> <laughs> just catches me out the blue sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that's the, that, that's the, Stripping of the wallpaper yes. that you've done there, and you've prepped it all. You've sanded it. Yep. Um, you filled, and <laughs> <laughs> then what? What's next? Um, so you've got to think about the skirting boards. What about them? Oh. Are we? Ke- oh, sorry. Are we keeping the skirting boards? Do you want to keep? I think the you have. Board? Do you have to keep a skirting board? You, yeah. It's... The wall looked weird otherwise. Uh, it's uh, yeah, you don't I... have to keep a skirting board. I've seen rooms without skirting boards. A naked wall. Can you not have a room without that? I think it's quite hard to plaster right down to the floor. That's the reason for, I don't quote me on that, but I think that's the reason for skirting boards. Okay, so are we keeping the skirting board, I guess? I think so, yeah. Okay, yes, Ruth, yeah. we'd like to keep our skirting board. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it's a case of looking what condition they're in. They're probably, if it's an old house with wood chip on the walls, they're going to need a good sand, or maybe if they've got layers and layers of really old gloss, they're going to need stripping right back as well. What what fineness of sandpaper do you tend to use? Oh, I like to go for an 80 if oh. they're really bad. Okay. And then increase the gradient as I... As I go. And do you have like a sponge that you wrap your sandpaper around? Yeah, the Which sanding block. Sanding yeah, block. Mm-hmm. But it's when. It, sorry, Tom, for the novices in, <laughs> in the room. Uh, it's it's not like a hard block, and it's not like a soft sponge. It's in the it's in between. A hard Quite, sponge. Oh yeah, it's more like a hard sponge. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. So you do that to the skirting, would you? Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you have? Would you do that? Say that the skirting was in good condition anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but it still needed repainting yep. just because they wanted a different colour or a fresh coat. Mm-hmm. Would you just give it a gentle sand anyway to help the paint grab? Yeah. Help the paint stick better? Help the paint adhere to it, yeah. So you give it a light sand. Because uh, you got to think most most skirting, <laughs> most skirting boards have got like quite a shiny finish. Mm. So anything with a shine to it, paint isn't going to stick. Really? Because it's got that shine. So oh. you, if you slap paint on top of that, it's just it's going to chip off. It's going to scuff. So... Sand it back, coat of undercoat, which is good, really going to help it adhere and make it really long lasting, and then your top coat. Oh, you have to put undercoat on. Uh, yeah, a lot of people skip the undercoat stage, but it's yeah. really, really important. Can't you just get the um, hybrid? Is there not like a one, one, one wipe, one, <laughs> one, one dash, one paint that does it all? One, but no, like what's eggshell? <laughs> <laughs> Eggshell's a type of paint, and it can be used on walls. Or woodwork. If it's used on walls, it's really hard wearing. I put it on, um, I painted a pub, so I used eggshell throughout because it's wipeable as well. So if someone spilt their pint over the wall, you can just wipe it straight off. And why is it called eggshell? I don't know. Do you think it's because it's got eggshells in it? Possibly, because there is. Is it sheen? Has it got a slight sheen? It has got a sheen to it, it, yeah. Yeah, it does look a little bit like an egg sheen. Do you like an eggshell, John, uh, John in your house? John. Sorry, it's my, (laughs) John's, I was going to be my son's Three years. (laughs) Three years we've fucking known each other, and you're calling me John. John, John. let me try again. Let me try again. Joe, do you like an eggshell? As in the, the actual eggshell or the paint eggshell? The paint. Either or. I do, yeah. I use eggshell paint. Um, Is that your go-to? For my skirtings and my door frames. Door frames. Mm-hmm. For my mm-hmm. door frames. Good Is that right? Yep. I don't undercoat them. I should undercoat. You should undercoat them, yeah. I wonder why they look so yeah. shit still. Oh mm. God! Okay. Yeah. I think you'd find if you like scratched it with your fingernail, it might come away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it does. Yeah, it comes away really easily. Actually. Yeah, that's why because there's no undercoat. <sighs> How many skirtings and frames in your house have you done without using undercoat? All of them. So you got to do the whole lot again? Or just live well, it. no. I'm hoping this episode goes <laughs> really well, and I pay 
an extraordinary amount of money for Ruth to come all the way from Abbas Westworth. <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Oswest Street. Oswest Street. <laughs> Oxford Street. Um, cross Wasworth. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. So please, can we make this episode go really well? For sure. And just don't say anything inappropriate or upset. You're worried about me saying something inappropriate. Correct. You've okay. been on a funny turn lately. I have actually, yeah, there's been a few. <laughs> you've been bringing in a whole lot of fucking weird shit. And I like it. I'm here for that. But I need Ruth to still enjoy us and want to work Got your message okay, understood. thank you. Excellent. <laughs> so where are we at with our room? Uh, Woodship, how are we replacing? Let's say, Ruth, that um, the walls are actually okay underneath. Okay. What would give it a nice modern feel? Um, so we would need to go in, clean off all the paste, give them a good sand, fill the holes. <laughs> um, and then go in with some sort of uh, I'd probably whitewash them just to make sure that no imperfections are going to come through again so a whitewash is sort of like a a tester if you like of what the walls are going to look like once you get your final colour on so if I put a coat of white on and I see there's actually loads that I've missed during the prep it's my chance to then go back and rectify it before putting the very expensive paint that you've chosen on so you would you would paint the room yep. white mm -hmm. Before painting it the colour that I want it to be. Yeah. What? Why? Because if you've chosen a really expensive designer paint, what we've we've chosen um, elephant breath. Yes. By Farrow Farrow and Ball. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lovely colour. Which is costing us how much for a tin of that? Well, I think about eighty quid. Fuck. Eighty quid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's nice it's, paint. Is it a small room we've got in this? It is, and we've gone halves. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Uh, do you two live together in this scenario? We do, yeah. Yeah, okay. Whose yes. room is this? It's, this is a communal room, isn't it? Sex Downstairs. Uh, okay. Oh, no. No, we'll get on to that because we need to know how to put um, leather on the wall. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so this is just the office. Just enough, a TV room. Just TV room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Elephant's Breath, Fire and Ball. You spent 80 pounds a tin on that. Yeah. And I use it on the first coat and realise, oh, shit, I haven't fixed that. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do that. And then it needs another two. I'm costing you more money. Oh, it makes sense. Because we're going to need more fire and ball. Whereas if I just use a cheap white that I've got in the back of the van. So and like it imp those... the imperfections you're looking for are like little bobbles you've missed. Yeah, little bobbles. Little hole Especially you... with stripping wallpaper. It's like the paste I might have missed cleaning off and things like that. So which just looks like really textured and gunky on the wall. So that white coat is just going to highlight everything that I've missed. So In this scenario, Joe, if you hadn't chosen... Elephant's Breath, mm. Pharaoh and Ball. Yeah. What would you have gone for? Because I think one of the things, I've got no excuse for not decorating, but one of the things that baffles me a bit, Ruth, mm. is the number of different names for paint that, to my eyes, looks white. Yeah. I've got a little list here, Joe. Um, I'm going to read them out. And on this website, they <laughs> there is a splodge of said paint underneath. And I want to t you to tell me if you can see, A, any sign of the name in the actual shade of the paint which is all fundamentally white, or B, if you can see any difference. So these are meant to be the best white paint colours, according to designers. Number one is Swiss coffee. Okay, look at this splodge there. Do you see anything Swiss or coffee-based about that? Well, it's, it's slightly, yeah, it's slightly co like the top of a, like a white coffee. Okay. Yeah, that's quite coffee-like. Show this to Ruth. Swiss coffee, Ruth. Yeah, it's a, yeah, milk. <laughs> yeah, it does have a little milky look about yeah. it. Okay, white, you mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, number two, this is from Farrow and Ball. Yep. Strong white. Oh, that is one of my favourites. Yeah, that is strong. Because if you look at the background, Tom, that is white, white, and that's strong white because it's coming through. It's actually it? got a little hint of grey in it. Has he? Yeah. It's that's quite what hard makes to it see. strong. It's quite hard to see on phones sometimes. But um, you wouldn't really notice it was an off white until you compare it to a bright white ceiling. So okay, it's... let me give you another one here. This is Acadia white. That's the same as coffee white. Is that not the same picture as? Yeah. Look. Pretty much, yeah. They've put the same picture as coffee white <laughs> yeah, with white. Exactly the same, yeah. Why do? Why can't it just be white? <sighs> I don't know. There's so much on the market nowadays. It's crazy. So let's say we wanted elephant breath uh -huh. by Farrow and Ball. Mm -hmm. But we didn't want to pay 80 quid for it, mm -hmm. which is kind of what me and my wife do now. We mm. get the Farron Ball catalogue or na what another premium paint company. Uh, Lick. Pardon? Lick. Google them. It's a genuine paint Okay, brand. so, and they're like a premium paint yeah. company. Yeah. And you'd pay similar to Farron and Ball. Mm -hmm. What have they got, like, crushed up bits of gold or platinum <laughs> or silver in their paint? You'd that think. Is charging me 
quadruple for so, a fucking same thing? There's two qualities of paint. There's paint you can buy off the shelf in B&M Bargains for a tenner. And that is a tenner for a reason. It's because it's got hardly any pigment in it. You're going to need to do 10 coats to get a decent finish. And you can spend a little bit more and get much more for your money by buying either trade paint, which is literally anything that has trade written on the tin, or designer paint, like fire and ball and lick and coat and whatever. There's not really much of a difference between designer and trade paint, and trade paint is a fraction of the cost. Can we get trade paint if we're not in the trade? Yeah, B&Q sell trade paint. What? Or if you go to any decorators merchants, they'll sell you trade paint as a public... You know, do we, we have would to be we still have to like dress up? No, we, <laughs> no. So we could go normal, like yeah. look like we could go in this hera gear. Yeah. And they wouldn't go. You're not a decorator. Yeah. Yeah. No. Is it possible? And this feels like one of the urban myths around painting and decorating, Ruth. Mm -hmm. That you can go to the posh shop and get your Farrow and Ball colour chart, mm -hmm. and you can pop down B and Q and just go, which one of these have you got? You can go a step further. Yeah. You <gasps> can say, can you mix that colour for? They me? can make it. Yeah, they can copy these designer paint colours into trade paint. Because every every paint colour has a code behind it. And it's like a secret little little code. And that code could be Elephant's Breath by Fire and Ball. And then it could be Beige by Dulux. And they're the same colour. They're just made by different companies and diff under a different name. But the code is the same. So all they're doing is looking on their computer at what that is and mixing it for you. <sighs> but everything can be copied there's only a certain infinite amount of colors can i give you some basic colors john i'd like you to farrow and ball it for me yeah <laughs> blue uh le bleu <laughs> <laughs> okay hang on um cradle of the sea oh yes. yeah okay blue is cradle of the sea green minnie's meadow why minnie it's the only thing that came to my head <laughs> Okay, Joe, I'm going to give you two more. I'm going to give you brown. Um, throw enough on it at the wall and it will stick. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different genre. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you think yours don't stink? <laughs> <laughs> so you're fundamentally trying to create the image of two people farting at the same time. I know. Oh, you, the, the saying is your shit, you think your shit don't stink? I know. That's not a fart. That's a that's okay. A so you're now making people think about shit on their walls. All right, your last one is red. <gasps> the crimson pimpernel. <laughs> <laughs> you just wanted to say pimpernel, didn't you? Well, no, I was thinking because scarlet pimpernel. Yeah. Mm. Scarlet is a shade of red, mm -hmm. but this is a different type of red more to crimson. scarlet. It's more crimson, but we still wanted to relate it back to an 1850s novel, Crimson Pimpernel. Crimson pimpernel. That's quite a far and ball, actually. Really, yeah, isn't it? yeah. There's a there's a far and ball colour called India Yellow, oh. which is like a mustard. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. It's but when you read the hang back on, show me your shoes, Tom. Yeah, I think they're Indian Yellow. They're India Yellow. Yeah. <gasps> when you read the back of the colour chart, it tells you where the name originated from, and it's. Uh, well, surely that one's the easiest one to guess. You think? Oh, uh, it's from some cows in India that eat a specific type of mango. <laughs> Which affects the colour of their urine, and that's what this colour is named after. It's knocked you back a bit, that, so isn't it? So people paint chat. their living room a shade of cow pee. Yeah, yeah. And I, that has knocked me back a little bit, yeah. but given me hope that I think I've got a job yeah. in the future of naming paints for Farrow and Ball. I think there's someone on Farrow and Ball, just design team, just having a right laugh. You've got cow piss on your fucking wall. Yeah. <laughs> do we want cow piss? We don't want cow piss. No, do you want no. elephant breath or cow piss? <laughs> elephant breath is re honestly is going to be really stinky because they are not brushing their teeth, are they? No. Uh, there's another one called dead salmon. Dead salmon? Mm, dead salmon, yeah. Hang on, what does a dead salmon look like? It's like a brownie pink colour, if that... <laughs> I like how you've tried to imagine what a dead salmon looks like by shutting your eyes. And, and pursing your lips like <laughs> you've got a, That's a trout pout. That's not a salmon. That's it, yeah. It's like one's in the room. You've gone quite... You've actually you've tucked your arms in as, as if to show that you don't have arms because you're a salmon. So what shade am I? Uh, it's like a brownie pink. More, more. Not far off, actually. Nailed it. Oh, that was nice, actually. Pretending to be a salmon. <laughs> Have you been a salmon before? No. You should go to Yemen. Yeah. They teach you how to <laughs> do salmon fishing there. <laughs> so, I've got to be honest, you 
are looking magnificent today. What about you? You're looking lovely too. I wonder if it's anything to do with our new wardrobe from Hera. I think you might be right, Joe. When you told me I needed a new wardrobe, I was slightly sceptical because it's really hard to find something that works for you, but also works for me. That's the thing though, mate. Hera offer good quality, attainable clothing. And whilst they do specialise in denim and comfortable sweats, they've got a wide range and versatile collection for both men and women. Well, that's good news. Mate, honestly, their stuff is great. It fits lovely, it looks great, and it's super comfy. Where can people find Hera, Joe? You can go and treat yourself to a brand new look at heraclothing.com. That is H-E-R-A clothing.com. Hey, you want a jumper as nice as mine? Go to heraclothing.com. Come on, come on, come on. Wow. I'm dancing like this because I feel so good. And I feel so good because I've got my hair of clothes on. If you want to feel as good as I do, look as good as I do in this Hera hoodie that I've got, go to heraclothing.com. Hera. 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 That's H E R A clothing.com. Where are we at with our room? So we've sorted out the TV room. Yeah, now we've got to go to the boys' room. But they've got some really hefty stains from all these things. Are you just doing the same? No. Or is that taking an extra coat? Depends what the stain is. Okay, it's, <laughs> it's all that, um, it's like grease stain and it's like quite. Yeah. From where they've been chucking these sticky toys on the fucking wall. And they get oh, the ones that mm. flip flop down. Yeah. Oh, yeah There's lovely. loads of them, yeah. Um, you need a stain blocker. A stain blocker is exactly what it says on the tin. You put it on, it's really strong, smells quite bad. You use it in kitchens quite a lot around cookers where like oil's sprayed up. Because if you just paint over grease or oil, it's just going to come back through the new paint because the emulsion that's going on the walls is made with water. So oil's just going to bleed straight back through. <sighs> emulsion. Yeah. One of my favourite words. Nice, isn't it? Emulsion. Emulsion. Keep saying it until it becomes a very weird word and sound in your head. Emulsion. Emulsion. I've got so many different emulsions going around in my head. Emulsh me. It's making me emotional. <laughs> Emulsh. <laughs> <laughs> How much better is emul? I feel so emotional than I do emotional. It really paints the picture better. Literally paints the picture. I feel so emotional because it makes you go emotional. <laughs> so emotional at the moment. Emotional. Emotional. It doesn't matter. No, it's flatter, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we're pretty much going to do the same with the boys, but um, I'd actually we'd, we'd quite like one of the walls to be wallpapered. Oh, okay, wallpapered. Um, how <laughs> difficult? <laughs> wallpapered. <laughs> how difficult is it? Because I tried, I fucking tried, mm. and then I had to get Daisy's nan, eight years eight years old, to come and do it, and <laughs> she fucking <laughs> she had to decorate your bedroom. <laughs> She said, why don't we get... I'm sure she said to me, why don't we get Nan up? She's good, <laughs> She's good at this. I went, go on then. So I'm pretty sure they came up and they did the wallpaper. What, you, what were you doing? Jasper's first... I think I was at work. Because uh, I said, why don't I do it? She said, mm, it was so hard to try and work out. I think as long as you get the first bit right, you're flying because... It... It took me ages to learn when I was training. I hated wallpapering, but now I love it. Oh, you do love it? Yeah, I love it now because oh. it's so different. I don't get much wallpapering jobs. I think it's sort of out of fashion. Is it? it? Yeah. Not ask, not ask for it much, but I love it because it's so different to what I do normally, which is just slapping it on the wall. Can you get um, wallpapers that you can taste? Can you get... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Like like in Willy Wonka. Yeah, like surely in this day and age we've developed something that we can actually go. What flavour you know, wallpaper would you have? Well, I'd have like different snacks on there. Yeah, like because the built kids, into the pattern. You know what it's like with the boys, where they'd like, can I have a snack? Mm. Can I have a snack? And lick the like, wall. <laughs> exactly. You go lick the wall. Yeah. Just have that. that and would... then you'd have a range of snacks, and it could almost be like the a very hungry caterpillar. Yes. Yeah. You just. Exactly. Eat your way across the wall. Eat your way across the wall. Yeah. yeah. Choose the strawberries. 
Yeah, you'd have to replenish it quite a lot, though, I imagine. So it it does. It, so we don't have that yet. No, I don't think so. Oh, we do have now. textures. Should we should we do something? Should we yeah. get onto yeah, that? Let's get on it. Yeah, why not? You're gonna go into text sheet. Do you have texture? Yeah, I've stripped some snakeskin wallpaper off before, oh. and it was textured, and it was red as well, which has mm -hmm. made it feel a bit sex dungeony. It does it yeah. a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, red snakeskin, and yeah, when you ran your hand across it, it felt like you were stroking a really big snake. It was why but if we haven't got lickable wallpaper, well, you can lick it. Just it'll just taste of glue. Yeah. Um, what about self adhesive wallpaper? Or I've heard, and this blows my mind, Joe. Mm. That if you're moving house and you really like your wallpaper, sometimes you can take your wallpaper with you. Yeah, self-adhesive wallpaper. It's quite new. Um, and opposed really good for renters, apparently. You can just peel it off when you're when you're moving out. Yeah. What? Hang on a minute. If I'm selling my gaff <laughs> and you right, I'm selling it to you. Mm. Tom, you come buy my house. Mm -hmm. Do you mates rates or not? Market price value. is the price, mate. Okay. All right. You've come down, you look at it and you go, Yeah, I like this house. We agree a deal. Mm -hmm. It's sold. You come to move in. I've taken all the wallpaper away and the radiator. Why how the radiator as well? Because that's what I did in the last hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about that? Depends how I feel about the wallpaper in the first place. Yeah, but you've bought the house with that wallpaper. So I think it's. I think that's crazy. I think if you love that wallpaper. Your track record of not decorating houses as well. It's given you a job to do. Yeah, it's oh. a nightmare you, for me, actually. You probably would have lived with that for right, yeah, 20 years. Another 12 <laughs> years, yeah. I don't really like it, but mm, it'll do. <laughs> We've spoken about putting the wall on large surface areas. Yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, two coats and that lot. Mm -hmm. Surely you show your worth with how well you can cut in. Yeah. Because that is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. It's practice. It's all practice and a steady hand. What, what is it? What's it um, so cutting it is with the brush, like where you meet the ce the wall meets the ceiling, for example, or the wall meets the skirting board, and you need to get that nice straight line. So you cut in. So you you know cut I mean? in cut with in. the brush. So, so you, you roll the the large portion of the wall in the middle, but round the edges where the roller won't reach. Right. So you cut yeah. in, Tom. But you're not actually cutting, though, are you? No, no. No, that is deceiving. Yeah. yeah. But you cut you cut in with the paint. Mm. Not scissors, right. you cut in with the brush. So do you, what, do you use a smaller brush to bring it up to the level of the roller? No, your face says no. Oh, no. You, you use a roller? No, I use a big brush. Oh, all the way? Yeah. So well, no roller? No, sorry, all the way around the edge, I'll use a big chunky brush. It sounds less complicated than you two have made it out. Do you You're just <laughs> filling a hole <laughs> with a brush. I could have guessed that. Yeah. Do you cut in first or do you roller first? I cut in first. <sighs> I was trained to cut in first. And why? Um, is, it, is it more just preference of the painter or is there a reason why it should be cut in first? I've just noticed up there that someone hasn't cut in the wall. <laughs> can you see? They've done a, at the top there, you can see where the, colour. where the roller's sort of gone up to the top. So at the top there, can you see where it's slightly... It's very slapdash, Ruth. That would be where they needed to cut in. I think we shouldn't sit here and judge the reasonable <laughs> film studio that allow us to pay them it's a reasonable amount of money to <laughs> rent here. Depends what their attitude is. They might appreciate Ruth's professional eye. You've just so you've just done that. You've just scanned over the room. Do you find yourself doing that in many? Yeah, it's really. And my friends hate inviting me around for coffee. <laughs> I'm just looking constantly. Slagging like, off their kitchen. My job is to notice these imperfections and fix them for people. It's hard to turn off. It's hard to switch it off. So um, I remember once I, my friends lost me on a night out, and it was because <laughs> I was in the loo. Because they'd wallpapered the ceiling, and I was just sat there looking at it, thinking, "Who's done this? It looks terrible. They haven't even matched the pattern." I was in there for about half an hour, <laughs> just looking at the wallpaper. Just was looking it? at the ceiling, yeah. Not thought... a massive turd. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> that was. If you were to walk into <laughs> a, if you were to walk into a toilet again, mm -hmm. that had been, it was someone's downstairs toilet, uh -huh. so it was their guest toilet, I believe, mm -hmm. and as soon as you open the door, the the wall that you see in front of you is completely black. Mm. And then you look to the, your left and the wall on your left is also completely black. Mm -hmm. You then look to the right. The cupboard that keeps the toilet rolls is built into the wall, mm -hmm. is painted black. Mm -hmm. Is everything black? And then you look <laughs> into the... As if you were to turn back out to come back out. Yeah. So the wall with the door on it. Yeah. That's also black. Okay. Then you look up. You look up at the ceiling and you go... Oh, the ceiling's black. <laughs> so everything in there is black. Could have said that at the start. I don't think it would have taken me that long to notice. But in yeah, the, in yeah. the sink, <laughs> except the sink, except there's a couple of specks because they haven't really done yeah. a thingy with the job to cover it up. So the entirety of that toilet is black. What are you thinking? 
it's black paint, I assume, not black mould. It's black chalk paint. Ooh. Which room of your house is like this? Downstairs or upstairs? Downstairs side? guest toilet. Okay. Is it? It was in our previous house. And what, what's the end goal? What do you want it to look like? I wanted to be able to chalk whilst I was having a poo. <laughs> <laughs> so I Why thought, am I here? <laughs> I thought it was a good idea that I said, Days, I'm going to paint the downstairs toilet. And she was like, right. And I said, okay, leave me to it. And so I did, and I painted it. I, it started out with like a little chalkboard section because yeah. I thought, oh, it'd be nice for friends and family to come round, and if they're having a poo or having a long wee or something, just put a little saying in there for the week or a little, I don't know, a drawing or something. Just It was just, it was nice. I You're looking at me as if it's fucking madness. No, I thought I... it was a nice little idea, but I got carried away with the paint. I so I the painted whole the whole fucking A friend thing. of mine did that. He just bought a bar in Austria and he's in the gents' loose. He's painted the doors with chalkboard paint. So I dread to think what's going to be written on there. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a good bit of fun, no? Yeah. What sort of messages did you get on your chalk paint? Well, at different uh, seasonal times, like Halloween, we'd draw big pumpkins okay. in there. So it was actually recyclable. Mm. So I didn't have to get roof around to put up fucking wallpaper pump ping pang pee. <laughs> so I didn't have to get roof around to put up pumpkin wallpaper. You know, at Christmas time, we'd put a big Santa Claus face up there and say, ho, ho, ho. In white chalk? In all coloured chalk. Okay. You know, I thought it was a good idea. Why the ceiling? Did anyone write anything on the ceiling? No, I just... I suppose, is it under the stairs? Is it like a slanty ceiling? No, it was just a normal oh, room. Oh, okay. It was, I just got carried away. I thought, oh, it'd be it quite happens, cool. happens, it doesn't it, with a passion play like that? Yeah. yeah. I was like, really yeah. good. So I... you're not a big fan of that idea? I mean, I, I don't hate it. I wouldn't, probably wouldn't have it in my house, but, mm. you know. She hates yeah. it. <laughs> um, is it hard sometimes for people to realise what a finished room will look like? Yeah. Because I... The, the bis mistake I made, Joe, when I was about 15, I thought I'm going to paint my bedroom, or the bedroom I shared with my little brother. Mm. And I like the colour blue. You'll have noticed that in all my clothing choices. <laughs> so I went for a nice blue, Ruth, and only when I'd finished painting it with my mates did I realise that it was a deeply oppressive blue uh, that made the walls feel like they were crushing me. Yeah. Yeah. All depends on uh, which direction the room's facing as well. Does it? Yeah. So south-facing rooms and north-facing rooms, different colours of paint match each direction if that makes sense because of the sunlight hang on whose house has got movable rooms no <laughs> <laughs> so say you're my, in my house for example the bathroom's at the back it's south facing so it gets loads of sun it's got two big windows loads of sunlight so we can paint it any colour because the sun's coming in all day but the bedrooms are at the front and they're north facing so they don't get a lot of sun they feel quite cold so then you'd go for a warmer tone of paint to make it feel a bit cosier if I was just to paint those rooms white it, it would feel like a doctor's office, probably. But does it actually make it cosier? Yeah, you can. No, tell no, but does it? Yeah. Like, does it physically? Because when people have chosen a cool shade for a north-facing room that doesn't get any light, it still it feels really stark, like like a, I don't know a hotel or something. It's not homely. Right, warm there colours. Is... Give us some warm colours. If if in this house, in this this hellhole house that Joe and I bought together, okay. with a uh, chalkboard toilet. Yeah. We've done the elephant breath room, mm -hmm. office slash TV room. We've done the boys' room. That's lovely. I think they've gone overtly olive. And now we need to do some warmth in the kitchen. The north-facing kitchen. North-facing kitchen. North-facing kitchen. Uh, the, uh, elephant's breath and overtly olive are really good examples of warm colours. Oh. Yeah, they've got those warm undertones. Let's see. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Orange? Orange, like a burnt orange, yeah. Mm. That would be quite warm. Yeah. So black? No. <laughs> You need to say black. How do you get from burnt orange to black? Well, how much burn. how burnt is this? When you orange? burn an orange, what colours it go? Burnt orange. Ridiculous. Like a deep red orange. Deep red. Yeah. Like a crimson one. pimpernel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite warm. Um you can get warm warm tones of any colour, like blues and greens, you can get warm undertones. And and likewise you can get cooler tones, so it it I always say to people, you need to get a paint sample. You need to get a paint sample because this Paint might look amazing on the website, but and it might look amazing in your friend's house, and you're going to copy them. But your house is facing a completely different direction. It's got different lighting. It's going to look different. You sh you strike us as someone who's very good at their job. I mean, I've got Thank no you. proof, but well, your word for it and you. the tone in which you speak about your profession, <laughs> you must have fucked it up though. Oh yeah. How many like? What's the biggest fuck up you've had? Um. Nothing major, but I think any decorator that says they haven't got a little bit of paint on someone's carpet is lying. How have you? No, ha, no. How have you done that? Wait, how have you got paint on someone's carpet? That is all the precautions are taken. The dust sheets are down. 
you know, and steady hands, but it happens. It happens, of course it happens. You've got a roller that's covered in pain and you're using it for six hours a day. You're gonna get a little tiny little spot on someone. I'm sorry, Ruth, but I think that's unacceptable. <laughs> I think it's unexpected. We're only human. We're not. <laughs> you don't, I'm not asking you to paint my fucking carpet. Not I'm on, asking you to paint my thing. Not on every job, but you know it does happen occasionally. What's? Can you get it out? Yes, there's a nifty little trick. Let it, let it dry. Let it dry. Leave and it. And then just put something over it. <laughs> <laughs> that was your nifty little trick. <laughs> Move the sofa. Buy the customer a nice new rug and put it down. No, um, let it dry because if you if you start trying to clear it up straight away, it's going to spread. So let it dry, and then you can either scratch it out of the carpet with your fingernail or a little bit of fairy liquid. That's all it takes. Rub, yeah, come on. If it's a tiny mm -hmm. little spot. I mean, if it's a whole tin of paint you've knocked over, yeah. Could you trim it out with nail scissors? Just mm -hmm. take the top. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe. I'm going to try that a lot. <laughs> um, have you got any technique mm -mm. to stop? When I paint a ceiling mm -hmm. with my roller, mm -hmm. fucking goes in my eyes. Are and you... specks all over my face. Are you using a roller pole? A roller pole. A roller pole. A roller pole. Uh-huh. What's a roller pole? <laughs> Big pole. <laughs> and you screw it into the end of your roller. So rather than standing on a stepladder with a roller like this, with your arms above your head to so pay You just sit down. You, can, you could sit down. <laughs> I like how you take from that. You could do it sitting down. <laughs> but other than well, what else are you doing? So you don't get it in your face. So you don't get it in your it's face. It's not an excuse to sit down. How do you not get it in your face? It's still above you and you're looking at it. It's above you, but it's also in front of you. So you should always be sort of oh. behind the roll. Because you've got the pole down here. You actually don't have to lift your arms up like this. It's much it's much better for your shoulders and your back. Imagine like a pole vaulter running down the runway, that sort of angle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So the roller is here. And so I need a roller roller. Yeah, a, a roller polar. Yeah. A roller pole. And as you step... <laughs> roller pole. <laughs> as you step back... You sort of bring the roller with you, but it's still in front of you at all times, and then you don't get it in your face. So a long roller pole, mm -hmm. about four foot? Uh, yeah. A four it foot roller pole. It depends how your ceiling is, doesn't it? Well, average ceiling in the UK of indoor buildings is anywhere between six foot and 12 foot. So six foot ceiling's quite low, isn't it? 12 foot ceiling's quite high, isn't it? You've made that up. Well, I yeah. said it's in between. <laughs> 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 I have no idea. So you you love doing your job, yeah? Yeah. You love it. Yeah, love it. But what are the bits that you hate about it? Like there must be things that you're asked to paint, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Do you know it's not so much the paint? It's it's not so much what I get asked to do on the job. It's more aspects of being self-employed. Oh. So I'm a sole trader. It's just me, and I think some people think I pack up the van at five o'clock and just go home. And I wish that was the case. What do you do? Um, I will call and see three people who want things pricing up on the way home, which can take an hour, an hour and a half. Then I'm typing up those quotes. I'm sending invoices and washing all my brushes and rollers, which can take an hour. So sometimes I'll sit down at eight o'clock at night and I've technically only just finished work. That's a long day. Yeah. It's a fucking long day. And then weekends as well. It's can you come on Saturday and have a look at this, whatever needs painting. And yeah. So it's it's not so much... The job, I love the challenge of tricky jobs. Um, there's none that spring to mind that I think, oh my God, that was a nightmare. But it's more the admin side of things, I suppose. And then of course, there's always the people who don't want to pay their invoices. Oh, <gasps> didn't it favor. Mm. Motherfuckers. Big time. Oh, I'm not down with that, mate. I, I, I know even the people that could say that, oh, we're, we're struggling. Well, you knew you shouldn't have done it. Don't get Ruth over. It's been booked, booked, in, work booked in for yeah, months. And no, now you've given them an admin. invoice. No, yeah. you know, you know who you are, fuck off. <laughs> not having that. What about, Ruth, what about the perks of the job? So, Joe, if you and I were to go into business as painting and decorating team, yeah, Ruth, what do we need? In the old days, it would have been a plug-in radio, paint splattered, mm. plug-in radio. Has the game moved on? Is it podcast now? It's podcast. It's headphones. Headphones? Headphones, yeah. So I've had to buy over -ear, overhead headphones oh, yeah. like yours yeah. because I used to wear little AirPods that my customers couldn't see, so they'd assume I was ignoring them when they were offering <laughs> me a good, cup of tea. And as well, because I'm listening to podcasts upstairs or wherever I am in their house, sometimes they'll just hear me burst out laughing. And it <laughs> must be the weirdest thing because they're downstairs making a cup of tea and they can just hear me giggling away upstairs on my own. But it's because I'm listening to something. Do you have ever have it when the customer's not making the cup of tea yeah. or they've made the cup of tea, offered you one, made you one, brought it up to you, and then you just expect, you go, thank you, yeah, very much, and you want to have a sip of that and then you crack on with the job. Mm -hmm. And you assume that's happening, mm -hmm. and then you feel these eyes just fucking burning yeah. into the back of your head. Yeah. 
Do you get customers doing that? I've had a few want to sit down and have a chat and watch me do what I do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And there's, oh. there are certain things you can do to get them to bugger off. But yeah. Fart. Fart, yeah, that would be a really good one. Yeah, just start scratching my ass and, you know, put them off. Take a pretend call. Take a pretend call or just put my headphones on really passive aggressively. And like, it's very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just, like that, like... <laughs> ping them on like really ping them on yeah. and turn the ping volume on fucking up. hell <laughs> so oh my intense. god I've, I think I've done myself a cropper <laughs> <laughs> I think I've come a cropper um, yeah or just go back and two to the van for no reason at all just yeah because like they're not going to dispute it are they yeah no so yeah there yeah, are I, ways. I need to, I'm trying to be balanced with this as a customer they're paying you for the service mm -hmm. they've asked you for the colour they have they want to know that it's a decent be a job being done mm -hmm. Aren't they entitled to actually stand there and watch you for a bit to make sure that you're not just picking your nose and fucking <laughs> not doing a proper job? Do you know what I mean? They're yeah, getting... maybe. But surely that's at the end when I'm finished. Uh, if they can, they can say then. Oh, actually, I'm I'm not happy with how long it took, or I'm not happy with what you've done. That's fine. We'll always try and rectify that. But yeah, to it's sit there. So and watch. irritating, really. Someone's just looking over your shoulder, Joe, then going, "Yeah, you missed a bit, Ruth." Yeah, like, sake, or are you going to do, do that, that I mean, bit next? And it's like, yeah, I'm going to get, I've got one pair of hands. And these people are opting to watch paint dry. They're literally watching paint dry. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Would you? Watch paint dry. Mm. I find it very therapeutic. As long as I've got my iPad with me. <laughs> <laughs> Twin screening the paint drying. <laughs> Don't know what the problem is. <laughs> Just waiting for the paint to dry. Whilst watching in the next episode of The Traitors, it's absolutely <laughs> fine. Um, what about people that have tried giving you tips whilst doing it? Like, oh, you should do it this way. Oh, you shouldn't use a roller on that wall. Yeah. You should use a smaller, you should use a two inch paintbrush on that one or a seven inch on that one. My, one of my favorite um, types of clientele that I get is um, the begrudged husband. So um, this husband has been promising his wife for about six months, a year that he's going to paint the living room, for example. And he never got round to it and he keeps putting it off and he'll end up in the pub at the weekend. So his wife's had enough and she gets me in. And then I've had it where he, he, the husband has come home from work and I'm there decorating and he's like, who are you? He had <gasps> no idea I was coming. The wife has just gone behind his back because he keeps promising to do it and he never did it. And then a little bit of insecurity kicks in and he's like, oh no, I was meant to do this and now there's a girl here doing it. Mm. I should have done it. So he will then say, oh, do you have to... Da, da, da. Do you, when you do that, why do you do it like that? And have you got that in your toolbox? And I've had the begrudged husbands asking to borrow my tools as well. Do me a favour. Yeah. So I do love the begrudged husband. It's quite satisfying. Sounds like them of a bar, doesn't it? Or a pub. <laughs> begrudged husband. Mm. Yeah. I should. Well, like it. those those hang those out. fellas should go. <laughs> Joel, yeah, see you down a begrudged husband. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were me decorating the kitchen. No, I ain't decorating the kitchen, mate. I have a couple of pints, thanks. <laughs> I'll come back and do it. Roof is going to give me a hand. <laughs> um, fuck, I can't stop smelling that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Can we, rather than selling pints down the begrudged husband, <laughs> let Roof's happily come and decorate it for us? <laughs> in eggshell? In, no, it wasn't yeah. eggshell. What it was. was. The, what was the, was it eggshell? Emulsion. Emulsion, yeah. Emulsion. Yeah. Where we all get emulsion all about <laughs> our wives being, oh, they're being mean to us. Right, We're going to get round to it. <laughs> when Roof has finished painting the pub where we don't drink, we just sit round. Getting emotional with <laughs> sniffing pens and paint, different paints. That's what I want to happen. <laughs> Fuck, we should set up our own pub. But it can't be called a pub if you don't sell drinks. What could it be called? A, pen, a, a stationery shop. Stationery shop. <laughs> <laughs> stationary shop, okay. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Tom, but the outside of my house is white. Mm -hmm. It's painted white on three sides. Mm-hmm. So there's one side that's still brick. I presume it's the side that, because it's not facing the wall, not facing the road or anything, so people can't see it, and they just gave up <laughs> because it's quite a big surface area. Do you paint outsides of houses? I personally don't do outsides, no. Is that because you think it's stupid or no. it's just too much work? <laughs> um, it is too much hassle to arrange because it's weather dependent. There's, you know, you've got to hire scaffolding. Most times, oh. you don't want to do it off a ladder. You'll be knackered. Oh. So, it's what about uh, an eight-foot roller pole? <laughs> yeah, but you still got to cut in at the top. 
Oh, fuck. That's a long time. Uh, yeah, but it's so high up. People aren't going to... You'd see it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay, can't fine. cut corners, Joe. I'm professional. Can't cut... Cu cu can't cut corners? Cut. Is that where the saying comes from? From the decorating world? Oh, it might be. Can't or, cut or, corners. Or the driving world, where you, if you cut a corner, you might go through someone's front garden. Oh, yeah. But I think it applies more to painting than it does driving. Oi, don't be cutting corners there. Because actually, you do want them to cut corners. So it's reverse <laughs> psychology on them. You go, oh, don't cut corners there. And they're like, fucking see, I will Watch me. I will cut that corner. I would like to know, Joe, we've talked about our house. I would like to know how your house is decorated. Oh. <sighs> Embarrassingly, there is wood chip wallpaper in both my bedrooms. What? Yeah. The little specky, like, rough shit. From the 70s, yeah. yeah. You spent so long slagging it off. No. And now you've what? My friend finds it hilarious that I'm a decorator with wood chip wallpaper in my bedroom. But it's an old Victorian house, and I'm worried that if I pull that wood chip off, A, it's going to take me two, three weeks, and B, the house is going to fall down. Because it's, it's probably held up. Probably holding the house together at this point. Wallpaper paste is holding your house up. <laughs> I think so. It's on the ceiling yeah. and everything. It's terrible. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Your ceiling? What's the point of being on the ceiling when you can't feel it? Because they're between six and 12 feet. <laughs> six feet, you can easily feel it. <laughs> Probably on the top of your head. Between tw 10 and 12 feet. To hide uh, imperfections in the really old Victorian horsehair plaster, I imagine. Horsehair plaster? Horsehair plaster, yeah. Oh. We had the bathroom ripped out and there was horsehair plaster behind the sink. Yeah, it was gross. What room in your house are you most proud of? Ooh. I've lived in this house for three years and I've painted the bathroom four times oh. in three years because I can't decide on the colour. So what colours have they been? So it was it was grey, emerald green. Too much? Oh, too much, mm. yeah, far too much. Mm. Small bathroom, so it just felt like yeah. a little cave. Um, it's been blue, and now it's like a pink. Like It's called set, it's setting plaster by Fire and Ball. It's the colour of drying plaster. Really oh, cool. I think that's that, like a yeah. warm terracotta. Yeah. Really oh, nice. yeah. yeah. What's that called? Setting plaster? Setting plaster. You're going to stick with that? Yeah. I think for the time being. We uh <laughs> we are currently in the process of getting the decorators in at ours. Um we need them to come round, have a look at the place, give us a quote, listen to what we want doing. And some of the ideas that I've had from you here today, Ruth, is making my mouth water. Mm. Lickable paint. Lickable wallpaper. Making my mouth water if it's possible. And if it's not, I'll just put plain wallpaper up and then put like a circle of jam, <laughs> a circle of marmite, yeah, peanut butter, blue tack some Haribo on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh fucking hell, Ruth. And then uh, what about bacon skirting boards? What do you mean? Just don't use skirting boards. Use bacon. What crispy fried mm. back back bacon? Mm. Yeah, good point here. And then oh, what else is there? So you can get that squeezy cheese, Ooh, can't yeah. you? A Dairy Lee, mm -hmm. you just push one of them up against the wallpaper. Mm. And also, if I put, I put it, what's the stuff that you can wipe down? Emulsion, emulsion. Eggshell, emulsion. Eggshell yeah. emulsion. So I can, I can put it down as wipeable. Yeah. I can just wipe that off when they've licked most of it off. They, they, reapply. They, you just go again. Yeah, you just reapply. Oh my God, yeah. this is going to work. Yeah. How do I stop mould? Uh, ventilation. Oh, I can't buy paint that stops mould. You can, you can, but we got a bit of mould in our in our bathroom, our top bathroom in the corner. It gets really quite mouldy, and I th keep thinking because it's got tiles on one thing, and then paint on one wall, and then mm -hmm. paint on the ceiling. And mm -hmm. I think, oh, I need to get some mould-proof paint. Your house sounds amazing. <laughs> what? Because of the mould and the chalk paint and the holes in the wall. And... Oh no, we sold that last place. Oh, okay. Yeah, um... <laughs> we just took, took our <laughs> shit ideas to a new place. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked on. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you need to you need to clean that mold off and, and block it off so it doesn't come back. And then yeah, you can get anti mold paint, but paint can only do so much. If you're not opening the window, or you, if you haven't got an extractor fan, then it's gonna come back. So the other thing I've also tried doing is painting my outside woodshed bit. Yeah, but I was I needed to get it done quick. Mm. And I was fucking hell, I can't be doing it with the brush anymore, and I can't do it with a roller. So I bought a spray gun mm. and I fill it up with the spray, put the thing. And psh, and it fucking hell, it's incredible. Yeah. Just shh, does a job. Yeah. Shh. Do you recommend or do you personally use any indoors? I found I found it easy to use the outdoors. Yeah. 
But what about indoors? Are you just a straight a paintbrush kind of worker, roller worker, or do you actually like a bit of the spray gun? I'm a traditional paintbrush and roller girl. Um, but spray guns tend to be used in big new build estates that are all being painted the same colour, same house over and over again, same colour, ready for the buyers to move in. Because there's no furniture in there that needs covering. The floors probably aren't down. So all you need to do really is t uh, protect the window, a door maybe. Yeah, so that's when spray guns tend to be used. And because that's not really my cup of tea, mm. painting new builds over and over and over again, I don't really use a spray gun. Mm. It does yeah. feel fucking cool, though. They are very satisfying. Oh, I get a lot it feels fucking cool. I get a lot of TikToks of people spraying yeah. stuff, and it's yeah, <laughs> very satisfying. Do you want me to come spray your house, Tom? With my... <laughs> <laughs> paint gun. Have you sprayed... Because sometimes... Uh, I know you've got a leaf blower, and you have antiqued someone once, haven't you? Antique. Antique them where you put a load of flour in the Oh yeah, yeah. the builder. Yeah. Uh, he was doing the patio. <laughs> and he was doing the what's the stuff that goes in between the the slabs? Mortar. Sand? No. no. Is it mortar? No, the filler. What is okay. it? The grout. Yeah. Oh he was grouting. That was it. And you've come around the corner. And I've come around the corner and he's on his knees and I've shouted, <laughs> Mark and as he's turned round, I've just gone <laughs> And this flower thing's come out the air, leaf blower. It's covered him <laughs> all over. But what's worse, it was this special grout that was like... Oh, no. um, and ball grout. <laughs> it was like special <laughs> grout that it, all the fucking flower had got inside it and it just ruined it. So and you fucked your own patio, please? Basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was worth it. Did he stay and finish the job after that? Because I don't know if I would. Of course he fucking did. I was paying him cash in hand. Oh. <laughs> That's all right, Mark. Hang on. <laughs> just because you're paying him cash in hand, you can just wreak havoc on him. You can what? antique him. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. Well, can you not? You ever been antiqued on a job? No, no. Right, well. Not yet. Wait until you come around ours and do ours. <laughs> <laughs> would you use your spray gun with anything apart from paint? Um, I've not tried... But I have bought two because I bought the first one, used it on the outside shed and forgot to clean it <laughs> after. Oh, that was another one. How would you clean your paintbrushes? Uh, cold water. What? Cold water. Not white spirit. Oh, white spirit. Yeah, sorry. If it's oil-based paint, solvent-based paint needs white spirit. But solvent-based solvent -based paints are quickly going out of fashion. Not because of the um, ozone layer. Yeah. And they take forever to dry. Oh. You know, um, solvent based, like gloss, you know, old school gloss. Mm. You don't because you've never decorated. <laughs> <laughs> Sniff that one out. This is the way I replied, like I knew what I was mm. talking about. Mm. It would be, yeah, um, mm. yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, what you mean, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, it would be sticky for days afterwards. Mm. That's solvent based and it takes it takes an age to dry, especially in cold weather. So they're, they're slowly dying out. So yeah, those need white spirit, but anything else, just cold water. Yeah. Could you bring your spray gun to our next live show at the Clapham Grand? Ooh. Yeah. I've got a brand new one in its box. Bring it in. What should I spray? I, instead of cleaning them, I just buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> They're only 40 quid off Amazon. Oh, that's all right then. It's fucking great. Mm. Yeah. Um, what's your working radius, Ruth? Do you want another go on that? <laughs> I've got a headache from the first two goes. Made me feel a bit queasy. <laughs> just out of interest, asking for a mate, what's your working radius <laughs> around Cross Uh I will, I will travel for work. My brother um, lives about six hours away in Cornwall. And he oh. wants me to come and decorate his house. So if people put me up somewhere, I will okay. come and You've got the caravan, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I'll, put, I'll put you up, yeah, put you up a ladder so you can reach the ceilings. Yeah. Can I bring the dog? She what sort of dog you got? Uh, she's a golden retriever. Yes, you fucking can. And what's she called? Marge. Marjorie. Oh, my God. Guess guess what the name of Daisy's nan was who did the wallpaper? Well, no, no, it's Marjorie. No, it's Diane. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. She's, her name's Maggie, but we call her Marge. So I think it's written in the stars that me That's and you big. team up yeah. and do a painting podcast. Okay. Because I'm sick to death of this one. Yeah. With Tom, okay. who does know nothing about DIY. Yeah. DIY. DIY. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, Ruth, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. And... D.I. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>